Congratulations, you survived another barbecue. <laughs> At least some of us did. Oh, me. I didn't think you had enough chicken, so I had another story. Sinus, scientists at NASA had developed a gun built to specifically launch dead chickens at the windshields of airliners, military jets, and space shuttles, all traveling at maximum velocity. The ideal is to stimulate the frequent incident of collision of airborne fowl to test the strength of windshields, which is quite a problem for airplanes, I understand. British engineers heard about the gun and were eager to test it on the windshields of their new speed trains. Arrangements were made, but when the gun was fired, the engineers stood shocked as the chicken hurled out of the barrel, crashed into the shatter shatterproof shield, smashed it to smithereens, crashed through the control con console, snapped the engineer's backrest in two, and embedded itself in the back wall of the cabin. Horrified, the Britons sent NASA the disastrous results of their experiment along with the designs of the windshield and begged the U.S. scientists for suggestions. NASA's response was just one sentence, thaw the chicken. Today, we are going to share with how you can have joy and answer prayer. And I want to go back to this in James. It starts out of James with greetings. And that word in the Greek is cheerios, be cheerful. I want to encourage you, when you get up in the morning, make it your number one duty to delight yourself in the Lord I want to let you know if you can get into the joy of the Lord and I understand this is a greeting in Europe cheerio this is where that book James one of the first sections there James says cheerio I want to let you know 
no matter what else the word has, it's good news. And the first thing, and I, I want to encourage you also, you do not wait for someone else to cheerio you. Amen? But I want to let you know, it's your determined duty to delight yourself in the Lord. And, and if you can't get happy in the Lord, I want to let you know, there ain't nothing else going to help. Think about it. How many of you know that we have tried to find fulfillment in the wrong things? We have drunk out of wells that we try to chisel out of the ground. And this is the reason the Lord says, in my presence, when the, if the Lord draws near to you with all his wisdom and ability, in my presence is fullness of joy. So the first word there is greetings. And we did last week, we studied and shared with joy and trials. You're going, what? <laughs> I want you to see that you can learn from your trials and your trials can be a great source. And now we go into the section, second section in verse 5 where James elaborates a little bit on this and it builds on this. So let's do this. It says, if any of you lacks wisdom. How many of you would raise your hand. I want you to raise your hand and say, hello, that's me. I don't know about you. How many How many? you know you could you use some more wisdom? I want to let you know, God, if, if there's any area that God wants to help you. Now, I'm not going to really dwell on wisdom today, but I do want to share a few things. Over in James 3.17, we're going through the book of James. So when we get to James 3.17, we're going to really get into wisdom. And there it says... The wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. So mark your calendar. We'll probably get there next September. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I, I wish that was humorous, but, I mean, but in reality, there is. I am seeing so much in the book of James, and today we're going to try to cover about four verses. So here it says, if any of you lack wisdom, and I just want to give a few things, how important wisdom, before we go on to the next section, you learn wisdom. Wisdom is the application of knowledge. You can, have, you can know how to do something, and if you have never experienced using that knowledge, it is totally, I, mean, I wouldn't say it necessarily worthless to you, but in fact, the Bible says knowledge puffs up. And I think many people know things, but they don't have, know how to have the experience. They don't have to do it. Knowing about it and doing it is a total different thing. So we learn from experience. I just want to give you a couple of them. Patrick, age 10, learned from experience. Never trust a dog to watch your food. Michael, age 14, said, when your dad is mad and asks you, do I look stupid? Don't answer him. <laughs> See, I, I mean, no wisdom. <laughs> there's some wisdom in these young people. Joel, age 10, says, don't pick on your sister when she's holding a bat. Andrew, age 9, said, puppies still have bad breath even after eating a mint. I can't print, how do you pronounce T A Y L I A? Taylor, age 11, says, When your mom is mad at your dad, don't let her brush her hair. I got three more of these. Amar, at age 9, says, You can't hide a piece of broccoli in your milk. And see what I, I want to highlight that when we talk about wisdom, it's God giving you supernatural ability. And I am convinced that many times that is learned through experience. Mitchell, age 12, says, don't sneeze in front of your mom when you are eating a cracker. And Michael, the last one, says, 14, never tell your mom her diet is not working. And those are words of the wise. All right. If any of you lacks wisdom, wisdom is... Before we move on, I want you to see through this process is that you're asking, we're going to ask God for wisdom. And wisdom is the discernment of what's good and evil, what works and what does not work. How many of you could tell us a few stories of what does not work? 
like maybe trying to lift a chair when you, someone else should be helping. Out. <laughs> or, and, and like, for instance, one of the things I noticed in the barbecue, we constantly are tweaking and finding things. Well, that didn't work. We're going to tape that tablecloth to the table, and we're going to tape it with Gorilla Tape. Hey, that worked pretty good there, <laughs> Becky. It's a good plan. Had the flannel underneath, and it were, we didn't, I didn't see it move the whole day. And see, see that was, God wants to help you. And I want to let you know, you can learn everything the hard way, or someone can give you some knowledge, and then you can apply that to your situation and see if it works. And that's where I feel like God wants to help you, because especially in the area of us being pleasing to God. How many, how many know, if, if you continue in sin, it's not going to work. I don't care how you do it. And, and we can see the society today. They are doing things on a daily basis, and you're thinking, they may think that that's a good plan. They may think putting that tattoo on. But I understood a couple years ago they were spending more money taking tattoos off than they were putting them on. And I knew several friends that one had paid pretty good money to take them off. And see, these as I see that, say, I thought, I, I just wish I could get a hold of them and say, come on now, think of this through, how this is going to look, 5, 10. And, of course, you guys have seen the Facebook, how that pretty eagle turns into a, Anyway, I won't go any further there. But we learn by experience. All right. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. I so wish everyone would have been here for Sunday school. Did you guys do wisdom, Donnie, too? I mean, prayer? I, I, I want to let you know, I beg of you, devote extreme amount of attention to prayer uh, I want to give you one illustration of how this worked back in 1976 I was strung out going to Bible school in Dallas I was a night auditor I don't know why in the world I was working I was getting VA benefits but anyway I was and um, I was just I was taking Russian in the morning and we got a free breakfast in the mess hall i don't think we called it mess hall then but anyway <laughs> and i was in there and i was going oh lord i pray for mom and dad and i was going through my trying to do my prayer lesson oh who did i leave out and I, oh, I, was, I was a nervous wreck really praying and i felt like the lord said hush well he didn't say it quite that nice either i said i, I sensed this in my spirit and i want to let you know prayer is, is you you release your request and your your things that you're looking for but how many know it's so important not only to ask for things but to let god tell you things i am convinced with all my heart god says stop he says i don't want you to say another word he says you're busy i just stop for a few minutes and let me love on you i want to let you know that's a major part of my prayer life god knows my needs before i ask him he knows my problems he knows my weaknesses how many know he knows, and he knows you and I need love. If it's simply coming before him, and when it talks about asking for wisdom, and I, I, I believe many times God puts you into situation, trials and situations, things come along, and his only desire for you is to find the solution in him. And many times, if you'll let God, how, how many know if you give the Holy Spirit office space in your life, he can work much better. If you lack wisdom, ask. And I believe with all my mind. Let, in fact, let's go to prayer. Father, we just humble ourselves before you. I, I'm lacking, Lord. I can't bring forth these truths that you put in my heart. I don't even know your word to the degree that I should, Lord. But I believe that your Holy Spirit has power here today to touch the needs of every person here. And Lord, I am convinced there's each of us here are struggling with situations, Lord, and you want to come into those situations and show us the perfect, clear answer to that situation, Lord. I just thank you, Father, for these beautiful people. And Lord, I just want to impress upon our hearts that you are a rewarder. And I know there's some people here that really put out a lot of extra effort this week working. And it would have been a very tempting to lay out a church this morning. I pray, Lord, that you would bless them in such a supernatural, wonderful way. Show yourself, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I just want to testify. Um, 
my car, the 08 Lexus, the starter went out. They told me all the front end was messed up, and it was like $1,700 to $5,400. And Best Buy told me it uh, was worth like $5,500. What? <laughs> so anyway, I decided, Renee and I, we thought, you, you, let's just get rid of that car. And so I, got, I was looking at a different car, and I, a couple of weeks ago, we, I was at a wedding, and someone gave me a $100 bill. And I had a little coin thing in the Lexus, old Lexus. I stuck it in there. Well, I traded my car in, and the next night I said, what's that little light on my new car? And I pushed the button, and there was a coin thing on it, just like the other one. They're both identical models except four years apart. I thought, oh, no, I left that $100 in that thing, and that guy in the cleanup's going to clean up my old car. Bye-bye. And I just kicked myself around all the way home Wednesday night. Well, I put my little alarm, and it woke me up. Uh, you know, I mean, it's ding, 9 o'clock, so I called the dealership in Rock Hill, and the guy laughed. He said, I told him, you go out there and find that, and you can send me a $9 check, because I don't want you sending that cash in the mail. And I thought, yeah, like wishful thinking. I got a call about five minutes. He says, <laughs> he laughed. He said, boss, I got your $100 bills. I'm going to put it in the, uh, in the mail to you. I want to I let you know God wants to help us. And, and, and if, if you don't see your need for it, that you lack wisdom, and begin to uh, labor that point of, God, let's partner together. And, and, and I believe God wants you to develop desires for things. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally. I just want to look at this word liberally here. It's just powerful. It's to... It's simply sincere and generous, without reservation. We were putting, in fact, Megan is an expert uh, sweet potato, little doodad filler. <laughs> we are good at it, aren't we? And also, I heard him over in the coleslaw. We wanted to put as absolute much sweet potato in that package as we possibly could now it was a point of no return we didn't want it going over the edge right but we wanted to express the fact when someone got their plate and how many of you heard somebody say man that your guys are sticking to your good thing i've got several people um you it's just good if we did evangelism as good as we did barbecue this whole community would be totally saved there would be no crime and everything we but we, we put as much, I'm going to let you know, God, that is God. God never says, I'm going to give you just a little bit. Have you experienced, and I believe half the time we do not experience God pouring out, <laughs> pressed down, shaken together. In fact, some of those lids on the coastal, I just love it. You put that lid on and it just squeezes all over the place. How I many know that's, that's God's nature? You look, at, you look at creation around us. I understand, I, I, I can't remember exactly the things, but our earth could produce food to feed four times as many people who lived on the earth. Now, the way we're going, the way we're messing up so much, but I, we, God's generous. He is liberal. He, he, our... <laughs> Be cheerful. See, I'm supposed to remind you again. A couple of you lost sight of that. See? <laughs> Oh, I come up here, I said, I hope nobody ate my cereal until I get finished with James. But I, I want you to see that Satan is a thief. He comes to still kill and destroy. But one thing, you, I challenge you to sit in prayer. S say, Lord, just I, I'm, I'm, I don't fully understand things. I lack wisdom. Would you sh and I w if, if he would take you down for 15 minutes, a road of gratefulness of everything he's done. And he'd start, and every time he'd show you something that he's done for you, it would open another window of his goodness. God is a generous God. Now, I believe many times God loves a cheerful giver. He gives to us as we give to others. Freely we have received, freely we give. How many know you keep receiving, we keep receiving, and you don't so freely give? I, hello? Then we stop the flow of his giving to us. And this is especially important in, wis in the area of wisdom. Who gives to all liberally and without reproach. Now this is interesting. Um, I want to look at this word without reproach. 
you know, it was, it's, it's, you had to be very careful. You, all the workers at the barbecue, to a large extent, were volunteers. So if someone was doing something that's not quite up to par, you had to deal with it with kid gloves to be nice about it. And I want to let you know, here is God. When he, it says that God gives to all liberally and without reproach, listen to this word. Originally, this word was to behave in a very juvenile or immature way, describing youngsters who make fun of or tease or taunt each other. Then the word came to denote mocking or ridiculing, scolding or insulting or using words angrily or sarcastically. I want to let you know you can discern the Holy Spirit of God because God will always speak to you in a loving. And I, one of the things that I can discern when the enemy is trying to give me information like a little dart that comes into your mind the enemy likes to aggravate you with guilt and condemnation with no line of escape. But I want to encourage you, if it's God, the Holy Spirit speaking to you, it will always say, now, Justin, if you're like me, you blew it again. Yes, I sure did. <laughs> I spoke when I shouldn't. I went when I shouldn't. And, 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 but it's always, let's learn from this and let's correct the problem. I go to Renee, I'm sorry, honey. Yeah, you're sorry. <laughs> I'm real sorry. And, and I, I, I want to encourage you, if, uh, and I want to go back to this, what my father labored upon my life, that righteousness is right relationships. God wants every relationship in your life to be wonderful. Now, you know, and as I know, you're going to meet people that's hard to deal with. In fact, it says that some people... A person that's given to anger, you should be very careful about you choosing to spend time with them. But I want to encourage you, if you have a relationship in your life that's a little bit out toward, this is an especially a place where you can learn from God how to, we, I went to a dealership over here on number one. I, I started to name it, but I'm not going to. I went in there and they had a, a 2011 like the 2012 I was going to get. I looked at it a little bit. I came in there uh, uh, two days later. This has been about a week ago. And that guy was kind of haughty. I thought you said you were going to call me. I had been busy that day, and we only had about five minutes. We were rushing to Renee's high school reunion. I thought, you blew it, buddy. <laughs> How many know that in your relationships, God can give you wisdom? Because you've got to be careful. Sometimes you can ruin a relationship just like that. How many of you know somebody right now, it would take an act of Congress for you to get back into good relationship with them because of their attitude? I, wanna, I believe with all my heart, if you will follow the example of God who gives liberally, and he doesn't reproach, he doesn't taunt. He, I, 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 the, I want you to be assured that God is by far the greatest teacher in this universe. I believe he has devoted himself to that from eternity. And I believe that when you... He, he makes learning fun. And many times you make learning fun by being successful at the things he shows you. And I believe God wants that for us. All right. Verse 6. In fact, I want to go back. We were talking in Sunday school about Harold Parrish praying. Let me read it exactly right here. Our kind and gracious Father. Can you hear him saying that? I want... I want to encourage you that I believe a lot, one of the primary lifetime experiences for you and God wants you to really know for sure is that you can walk into assurance and say, my kind and gracious heavenly father. And I believe many of us do not get into that because we don't spend time seeking him to cry out to him, to ask for him. Verse 6, but let him ask in faith, prayer, let your supplications and requests be known, but let him ask in faith with no doubting. Doubting there is a thing of withdrawing from. And one of the things I want, it takes, I believe in prayer, a tremendous, a God wants to teach us persistence. That we keep asking and we keep knocking and we keep wanting. And, and it's interesting, the Lord impressed me, it says, ask, seek and knock and the door will be open. I believe 
that God wants to open a door of revelation into your mind. And it's like a serendipity thing. It's the thing where you, when you see this revelation, it will transform and revolutionize your life. Without doubting, for he who doubts is like the wave of the sea, driven and tossed about. I tell you, this, I, I, I got so convicted through this thing. I want to let you know, I'm not double-minded. I'm tripled or quad-minded sometimes. Can you relate to that? How that you're just, it's just, and, and here, here we have a situation where, uh, yes, no, yes, no, and Faith has the power of locking you in so you will not be like the sea driven and tossed about by the wind. Verse 7. For not, let, let not that man suppose he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Double-minded there is to like having two minds. It's actually the word psyche for soul area where you're thinking and you actually have a dialogue with yourself trying to decide what to do and I am impressed by when the Lord steps into the situation he gives you strong assurance and this is the reason and one of our strongest assurances is that you can go back to the word when the God says I will supply all your needs according to my riches how many know you can take that to the bank and if you continue to be double-minded to, to, oh, Lord, I don't know what to do. I can't make a decision. I just want to encourage you that God is not the author of that. Suppose he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. We're, we'll get to this verse later, but over in chapter 4, verse 8, it says, and I want to close with this, draw near to God. Is that not prayer? You come to God, and I just draw near to you. And I want to give you the assurance of the word. If you will draw near to God, Lord, I lack wisdom. Lord, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do about this situation. Lord, my heart is weak. I'm hurting. Draw near to God, and I stand on the authority of the word. He will draw near to you. And I believe that is the total solution to our problem every problem that we have he will draw near to you cleanse your hands purify your heart you double-minded i don't know about you but out of this scripture here i am determined like never before i want to lock in to god i don't know about you i do not want to continue making some mistakes in my life that i have made and sometimes that may be zipping it when i should and, and spending more time just waiting before the Lord. Father, I just thank you for your goodness. I know, Lord, that your Holy Spirit can go so far beyond in our lives than we can imagine or think. Lord, I just pray that if there's anyone here struggling, Lord, in this area, that you're going to give us great assurance, Lord, that we do not have to be double-minded. Our hands do not have to be dirty, Lord, and our hearts filled with wrong things. I thank you, Lord, that you're a good God and that you will not upbraid or criticize or turn us away. And I just give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Come, Donnie and Jean. Thank you. 